welcome to Lesson 1, Part 4. Dr. Ken Meyer here with you again to take you through our last section, section or last part of Lesson 1. So to start with, we're going to be looking at sine wave values. There are two aspects to any waveform. It's height and how long it takes to complete a cycle. And that time is often measured in degrees rather than in milliseconds. So two aspects of any waveform, magnitude and direction again. The horizontal axis of a waveform can be calibrated in degrees and or in time, as we've just said. And the vertical axis shows a voltage or a current and has a value at any point in time and we've got to find a way to deal with this particular voltage that's changing, which is about where, it, where we're about to go. So we're back to looking at a sine wave. Now I cannot over over emphasize how important it is to understand all these particular aspects around a sine wave. As you do the assessments, you're going to be asked for certain values around sine waves and how to calculate them. So let's start. Here's our sine wave starting at zero degrees. I've got my cursor on the zero point horizontally and vertically. So voltage in this direction positive, voltage in this direction negative, and of course time or angle in this direction. Again, you can see we've labeled it in degrees, but we've marked the axis in time because it can be either. But as you'll discover very quickly, we most of the time are actually interested in degrees rather than time. So let's describe our wave and let's start with the maximum or the peak. Now I've, you've heard me explain this earlier in lesson one, in parts zero, one and three. So here we have from the zero to the maximum point is the max peak. That's the max peak positive. It's also the same as the max peak negative. If they're not the same then it's not a sine wave anymore. So we just call it the max or peak value. We don't really care whether it's max or peak positive or negative most of the time. Just max or peak. Next we have the peak to peak value which obviously is from the top of the positive peak to the top of the negative peak represented by the two blue dotted lines we have the peak to peak value and it could be a peak to peak value of voltage or it could be a peak to peak value of current we also have instantaneous values anywhere along the sine wave as you can see my cursor slowly tracing up the wave as I come round the top it peaks off and starts to come down. We can also have instantaneous values. On the diagram, they just picked these two particular ones. That they're at no particular point. So this one here is going to be somewhere around about probably 140 degrees. And then this one here is going to be somewhere about 200 degrees. So this is what we call instantaneous values. An instantaneous value is obviously going to be a positive value somewhere in the first 180 degrees but it'll be a negative value somewhere in the second 180 degrees and finally the red dotted line here is what we call the RMS value rather than have to deal with peak to peaks maximums instantaneous values we've need to find some way to represent the overall averaging of the effect of the wave. So RMS stands for root mean squared, and we're going to go into exactly what that is in another slide or so. But that is the effective DC value of this AC waveform. So effectively, if this AC waveform was fed into a heater, it would produce the same amount of energy if the same voltage through here at RMS was fed into the same heater using DC. 
So RMS is the equivalent DC effective value of an AC waveform. So we've reduced our AC waveform now into an RMS value and a time or degrees as our other aspect. So all AC values, we normally say they are RMS at X number of degrees. So let's look at peak to peak to start with. So peak to peak voltage is the distance in volts or amps between the top and bottom of a waveform. It's measured mainly used in electronics. So we're not going to use it a great deal in electrical, but it's mostly used in electronics. It is written as volts P dash P and sometimes they leave the dash out and just go volts PP. So it's written as volts peak to peak, so a waveform with a peak to peak value of 10 volts is written 10 VPP. Reasonably straightforward and simple I think. The peak or maximum value, the peak or maximum value is the maximum value of a waveform is half its peak to peak value. And it's either written as volts MAX for max or volts PK. And you've heard me um, all the way through this video presentation referring to VMAX and VPEAK being the same thing. And there it is. So the maximum value of a sine wave occurs at 90 degrees, and we saw that on the previous slide, and at 270 from the start. So positive peak at 90 and negative peak at 270. The maximum value of a sine wave is important as it's used to determine the voltage rating of components in the installer and the insulation rating of electrical cables. So at your power point you might have 230 volts RMS but let me assure you the actual peak va value is closer to 300 volts so insulation would have to cope with 300 volts because that's the peak value. So RMS, effective DC, peak value is important because it often has an impact on the insulation rating. Instantaneous values, remember this is the third one, you can plot anywhere, there are thousands of instantaneous values. In actual fact, you could have one every degree or every tenth of a degree. It doesn't matter. An instantaneous value of a sine wave is the value at any point along the wave. It's written with a lowercase v, so we don't use the capital V, we just use a lowercase v, and is found with the following equation, but it only applies to sine waves. So the v, lowercase v, is equal to the sine of the angle theta multiplied by v max where theta is the number of degrees from the start of the cycle. So the sine of 90 would give you 0, which would give you the crossing point. Sorry, would give you the maximum value. Sorry. So V sine theta 90 would give you the maximum. Sine theta 180 would give you 0. So on and so forth. So here's a quick little example. Here we have a waveform and we want to find what the instantaneous values are at 50, 145, 220 and 335 degrees. They're just random values, there's nothing special about them. So 50 degrees we want to know what the instantaneous is. At 45 we, what's the instantaneous? At 220 and at 330. So obviously at 50 and 145 we should end up with a positive number and at 220 and 330 we should end up with a negative number. The next thing to note is our V max from 0 to the peak is 25. Our peak to peak is 50. But because we can only work out instantaneous on V max, our V max in this case is 25 volts. So let's have a look at how we do that. 
So we take our first value, Vmax, at 25 volts, 50 degrees. So V sine is going to be V sine theta Vmax. So the sine of 50 multiplied by 25, remember 25 being our Vmax. So 0.776 times 25. So at 50 degrees, it's going to be 19.15 volts. Again, at 25 volts max, at 145, so we get sine 145 times 25, that's 0.573, multiplied by 25, and our instantaneous value at 145 degrees would be 14.34. Our third value, remember, was 220, so sine theta v max, so the sine of 220 multiplied by 25. Look at it this time. This time we've got minus 0 0.64 for sine, multiplied by 25, and we get minus 16.07 volts. Remember we said we'd get a minus figure for the second two values, and then finally at 335, if we take the sine of 335, it's minus 0.423 multiplied by 25, and we get minus 10.57 volts. Again, I would suggest that you pause the video here, sit down with your calculator, and make sure you can do each of those instantaneous values. It's really good practice just to be able to get the instantaneous values and how to achieve that on your calculator. So RMS value. Here's the here's the important thing. RMS value. This is the one we use most of, often. Unless otherwise stated, we always work in RMS values, and we'll see that shortly. This is the root mean square or the effective value of the waveform. Sine wave power frequency voltages are usually expressed as an RMS value. And we will always use RMS unless otherwise stated. The reason for an RMS value is related to an AC value that is equivalent to the DC value. An RMS current of 1 amp has the same heating effect as a DC current of 1 amp. It's as simple as that. So it's a way of taking all those instantaneous values into consideration, both positive and negative, and saying, here's the effective DC value. So we can then start to use some standard algebra, and dare I say it, some standard Ohm's law, to do some, some um, mathematical modelling of what's happening with the physics. So how do we calculate RMS? By the way, you won't ever be required to calculate RMS. It's just nice to know how to do it. So the RMS value of any waveform is found by the following. We calculate the number of instantaneous values for the waveform. And let's say we took one value every degree. So that would be 360 values. We calculate the square of each of these values. So we work out the value of each of those things 365 times. We add all the squared values together. That's the next thing we do. We add all the squared values together. Then we divide this sum by the number of values to get an average or a mean. So we take all the instantaneous values, we square them, and then we divide them. So if we took 360 of them, we would divide by 360. Finding, then we find the square root of the sum. So we've got the individuals, we've squared them, we've added them all up, we've averaged them, and then we've taken the square of that result. That is the RMS, the root mean squared of the number. So here's the equation. This is the bit you need to find on your uh, equation sheets and be able to use. The RMS value of a sine wave can be calculated by dividing the maximum value, that's the Vmax value, by the square root of 2. That is, for voltage, volts RMS equals 1 divided by square root of 2 
times v max. And this is because 1 divided by the square root of 2 is 0 0.707. So we tend to just remember that number. So, so we can say the RMS value is 0 0.707 of the max, or it is the inverse of the square root of 2. So you can either remember the inverse of the square root of 2 multiplied by the voltage max gives you the RMS value, or you can simply say, and remember, 0.707 is the RMS. So if you have the Vmax and you want to find out the RMS, you simply multiply by 0.707. So here's a little example. Find the RMS voltage and current. So here we have a sine wave starting at zero over time. We're told we have a 100 volts peak. There it is there. So that's the 100 volts peak or the 100 volts max. We have a resistor here of 100 ohms. So how can we find out the current, the RMS current and the RMS voltage? So we need to find the RMS voltage first. So here we have 100 volts, 5 ohms. RMS is 0.707, so 0.707 times our 100. We have, a hundred, we have RMS value of 70.7 volts. And we can work out the current because we can just use Ohm's law. So the current RMS down here, equation 2, the current RMS is the volts RMS divided by the resistance. Remember from our diagram, we were told we had 5 ohms. So we have our 70.7 divided by 5. So we have our current RMS at 14.14 amps. So by working out our RMS voltage, then using our RMS voltage in standard ohms law arrangement, I equals V on R, we have 70 divided by 5 gives us 14.14 amps. So there's our answer. We we're able to get the Vmax, 100 volts, so the RMS was 70.7. And by applying Ohm's law, since we can do that with RMS values, we now have 14.14. But what about the power? So we can also calculate the power. How much power is being dissipated in the resistor in the previous figure? It's 15.16. We now know we have an RMS value for voltage and an RMS value for current. And if you remember your Ohm's law, the power equals the voltage times the current. So normally written as P equals VI, just like a DC circuit. When we have RMS values, they are the equivalent DC values, so we can use Ohm's law. So the power is simply 70 multiplied by 14.14, giving us 990 watts, or almost 1 kilowatt, of power. So if you know the RMS value of a sine wave, you can also find its peak-to-peak -peak values. The equation is simply rearranged in the previous. So our Vmax is equal to the square root of VRMS, which is simplified to 1.414 RMS. Peak value for voltage, peak-to-peak, -peak, 2 volts or 2 times square root of 2 volts RMS. Sometimes it's handy to find the average of a sine wave. It's a little bit different to RMS. And when we don't have actually a pure sine wave, the average is a better way to go. When you've got a pure sine wave, beautiful, you can use RMS. When you don't have a perfect sine wave for some reason, then an average is a better way to do it. So in this particular case, here's our one cycle. 
and again our sine wave rotating through 360 degrees when we have a total cycle the average is actually zero because the average over time we have all of this and all of this and the first half of the cycle cancels the second half of the cycle and we're left with zero is the red line if we only have half a cycle the average ends up being up here and the average is 0.637 so the average voltage for one cycle of a symmetrical sine wave is zero so if we have a whole sine wave nice perfect sine wave the average is always going to be zero if we have part of a sine wave or the sine wave is no longer a perfect sine wave then the average is the way to go and you just take the peak value and it's 0.637 form factor the form factor of a sine wave gives a guide to its shape that nice smooth chopping and changing sine wave that goes negative positive then negative positive and negative so the form factor of a wave gives an idea of its shape it is defined by the ratio of the RMS value to the average value so form factor is the RMS value divided by the average value so the form factor of a sine wave would be 0.707 for the RMS 0.637 for the average giving us a form factor of 1.11 so if you have a sine wave and you're not sure what it is if you work out what its RMS is and its average and you get 1.1 you know it's a sine wave if you get anything else it is not a sine wave crest factor now crest factor for a wave also gives a guide to something to its shape it's defined as the ratio of the maximum value to the RMS value so that is the crest factor is the maximum value divided by the RMS so maximum on the top divided by RMS on the value so the crest factor of a sine wave it goes to a maximum of 1 for an RMS of 0.707 so its crest factor is actually the square root of 2 which is 1.414 so here's our summary of sine wave values here's the here's the little diagram that you really got to get your head around we've got all the complexities now added to the one diagram let's start with zero volts zero volts goes to plus volts maximum in this direction minus volts maximum in this direction the horizontal scale is time or degrees but more often it's in degrees the green wave is our sine wave and it's the steepest at zero and as it hits the crest it flattens off and then as it comes back across zero you get it nice and steep again then it flattens off as it changes and then comes back to quite steep as it comes back to zero our maximum or peak value is from zero to the peak positive or zero to the peak negative okay that's the maximum or the peak value the peak to peak value over here the purple one is from the peak positive to the peak negative so that's peak to peak anywhere along the wave we can measure or determine instantaneous values so instantaneous values happen at any point along the curve and we normally reference them to somewhere on the horizontal axis saying what's the instantaneous value at 90 degrees or what's the instantaneous value at 180 so on and so forth 
The next important one is the volts RMS. Remember, this is the effective DC value, and it is 0 0.707 of Vmax. That's an important one to remember because quite often we do everything in RMS values, and it is 0 0.707 of Vmax. And finally, the blue dotted line is the average value. Average value of half a cycle is 0.637, or the average value is 0.637 if it is non-sinusoidal. If for some reason we're only dealing with half a sine wave, or quarter of a sine wave, or a wave that doesn't look sinusoidal anymore, then we would use the average value, because RMS only applies to full sinusoidal or sine waves. Okay, this is an important table summary. That you will need. And of course, um, other summaries I've provided on Ken's equation sheet. So if you go to the back of Ken's equation sheet, you'll see the summary of a sine wave. And when you're in exams and tests, you don't need to necessarily remember all the numbers. There they are laid for you out on the equation sheet. But what is not on the equation sheet is this nice little conversion table. So here we have Vmax. So Vmax is equal to the peak to peak divided by 2 and it's 1.414 of the RMS value. It can be positive or negative and it can sometimes also be just called the peak value. I try to avoid calling it the peak value because it gets mixed up with peak to peak. So I tend to use Vmax. The next one is our voltage peak to peak and it's two times the Vmax or 2.82 of the volts RMS. That's just the doubling of 1.414. Volts peak to peak has no polarity. And obviously it's twice the max value. Next is our volts RMS. Volts RMS is equal to 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.0.707 of Vmax. I'll get it right eventually. Again, RMS has no polarity. An RMS value has the same heating effect as a DC value. Volts average for a half cycle is 0 0.637 of Vmax. It can be positive, it can be negative. And an average value only applies to a half cycle or you might apply an average to a non-sinusoidal wave shape. V lower case, which is V instantaneous, and I don't know why they didn't put a little INT on the slide here. So volts INT for instantaneous equals V equals sine theta V max. Theta is the angle at the point in the cycle where V is being calculated. It can be positive or negative, and we saw that in a little example. And the V instantaneous is the instantaneous value anywhere over the full sine wave. So that gives you a quick little summary of Vmax, volts peak to peak, volts RMS, volts average and volts instantaneous.